reminder for myself and abdukul aji so da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal <coughs> but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. That Allah's rahmah and mercy that most forgiving, most merciful and if we empty our cup in life negate our self and lower and everything from the material world says, you have to be strong, you have to be tough and you have to be obnoxious and it's all wrong. And that character is a strength from a material world that is ever perishing. And the best example of that material world is, is act like you're tough like a tomato. And you know that a tomato will rot in about five or six days. So all this dunya Allah described, all this material world, all its universes, all that we can see of galaxies, Allah said, all of it not like a weight of a mosquito for me. The wing of a mosquito is, is more important to Allah He says, the weight of it all of dunya is of that comparison, it means I take nothing from it, I'm not interested in it, I'm not really impressed by it, it has no value. That's a lot because maybe there must be a huge secret in the wing of a mosquito that all these planets, all these creations, all these galaxies and Allah wants us to know it's nothing. And that strength that you seek from this world and what you deem to be powerful it's but one shout and Allah make you nothing. It's funny watch all these Instagrams and all these accounts and, I got this, I got that, I got these bitcoins, I got these things, I got this, I got this, I got this and by the next day, I got nothing, I'm jumping out the window, I'm going to kill myself. Well, of course you're going to kill yourself, you bet on the wrong game. You bet on the wrong game. We said before is that write your last chapter and move towards it. And now all these businessmen they claim that that's their, their motto because they want to use it for dunya. But no, no this is the heavenly motto is that write, is, write your last chapter first. Write the last chapter of your existence, what is it that you want to end with? on this last chapter, I want to leave this world in service, in good shape, I want my children to wash me, my community to pray over me and I want to be sitting right next to Prophet feet. Now how am I going to get there? And this whole dunya is so collapsible and so temporary and Allah inspire within our hearts is that to negate oneself, make yourself into a dot for the dot carries all the power, all of Qur'an means that in every aspect of our life if you take this example of binary code and meditate on how it's applied in everything. Look how they brought it into dunya and every technology is by a binary code. You can't make a circuit board without on and off. So they're using it for the material world but it's an immense reality within the world of light and paradises. All of Qur'an in 30 juz, all 30 juz, its secrets in seven verses of Surah Fatiha. All of Surah Fatiha's secret is in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. And all of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem's secret is in the ba. And that ba is a bab. And Imam Ali described, I'm the ba, the ulul al bab, the caretakers of the gate. Asadullah al Qalib, the victorious lion of Allah. That if you want to emulate a character, emulate Imam Ali salam. That if in our life we negate ourselves, they said, you want that position? He said, I don't want the position. Are you jealous of having that position? Don't care for the position. Whatever came to Imam Ali salam was to negate. 
and showed us the reality of negation that even as a child that if Prophet is in danger and has to make the hijrah, I will lie in the bed and sacrifice myself, let them to come because he lied in the bed of Prophet Let me to lie in this bed and they'll come, they'll kill me and then you can escape, no problem. As a child he sacrificed himself, he accepted a, the message of Islam and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad as a child with purity and purity of faith we call futuwah which Lord of the Rings was its imagination of that. That all the men couldn't carry that responsibility except the trustful youth because of the youthful innocence and the purity of that innocence. And Imam Ali describes his purity or is the example of that purity is, I'm going to sacrifice myself for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So immediately establish this whole religion is about sacrificing yourself for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad because that became now the hijrah, that became the opening and he lays the foundation as a youth that there is no Islam, there'll be no Medina, there'll be nothing opening. If we don't sacrifice ourselves for the love and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad becomes the first then to establish for us the understanding of a nukht and what is the character of a nukht? What is the living character of a dot that negate and negate and sacrifice oneself and as a result he became immensely powerful, that the battles were fierce with the presence of Imam Ali And the length of his sword, you go to Tubkapi, it's literally five feet long or four feet long, huge iron sword with a handle about this big. How he carried this sword that probably ten men have to carry and was moving it around. The, the full battle sword, not the Zulfiqar was for something else. His full battle sword was like seven, eight feet long, this thick and ten men now can't move it in Tobkapi around. The immensity of that strength because when Allah supports, who can come against you? When Allah supports, who can defeat you? When Allah supports, who can impoverish you? But if Allah does not support, Allah will defeat you, Allah will impoverish you, Allah will destroy you. That's a, that's a mighty scary situation. So those whom are awoken, they realize, which one are you going for? If you go in the direction of dunya, and you hope something from this material world will make you famous, make you powerful, make you to have some sort of significance. You came against the most powerful reality in existence and that's scary because if Allah begin to come against you, there is no one that can help you. There's no one that can give you money and make you to keep it because you see now all the arrogant and obnoxious people crying on their social media. Weren't they the ones whom claimed, and this is like a thousand stories in Qur'an like this, we actually get to live, read the Qur'an and then watch it in action. When Allah came across the men of strength and they deemed their wealth to make them independent, that nobody, I don't rely on anybody, I have an imaginary digital currency and I'm so powerful, so rich. And that guy who has that lunatic thing, he was laughing at other people collapsing just days before. And Allah described these people, they deem their wealth that gives them some sort of independence like they're not touchable by Allah And Allah says, but one shout and the sentiment of the hearts of men are under Allah's control. 
and Allah merely inspired their hearts, dumped that and immediately you see this everything starts collapsing. And Allah put into the heart, beat him and all of a sudden people coming after you. Who can protect themselves against Allah Defeat him, bring him down, punish him. Allah controls the hearts of mankind, the hearts of all nature and every creation. He can make all the animals come after you, make all the cockroaches and bugs and spiders to eat him. Means that which people seek is the wrong power. And what the tariqah comes to teach us. Is that take a path and how to get that power because everyone wants, oh who believed and say, oh we want from Allah only, that's not the way. You want the power from Allah Allah wants something from you, from me, negate yourself, be nothing. So we understood, be nothing, be a dot, Allah's the one. But Allah has other practicing ones who've been trained and they're negated dots and that's why binary code. And Allah trained them with Prophet through his awliya that they became nukhs and amongst people they're nukhd. They're off. That's why people say, I want to accompany a shaykh and see like, do you like do miraculous things all day long or something, you're just sitting and watching TV having chips and going swimming? They think you're going to be miraculous all day long. But if the one was trained as a nukht means he's off, all the time he's off. And the reality of Prophet lower your wings to be nothing so people will approach you, I mean be tolerable. And as a result they're so trained in being off and when Allah wants certain of those rijal because the ones whom they don't speak they're always off and they're so immensely off that people become fooled by them. The Imam of all the Budala and these are the 40 Abdals that they change image and move throughout creation. They call not shape shifter but shifters. You don't know their image and they can be anywhere Allah sends them at any moment and they can be many places at the same time. You can be sitting with an abdal and he can be in 24,000 places at that moment all in a different surah. And it's known, this is our hadith, these are many different teachings of the budala. And as a result the imam of them, Imam Shihabuddin is his spiritual name. If you came across him you thought he's a nobody giving water in a masjid because he's a nukht and he's not somebody that had to speak. And they're so humble, so powerful, so powerful that the humility of looking at them you're astonished and you cry when you look at them because of the tajalli on their faces and the light that emanate. And the ones whom Allah wound for guidance because the nation has to be guided, physical guidance, spiritual guidance, those whom are silent their spiritual guidance is everywhere. Their madad and support is upon those whom speak and those of creation. And the ones whom speak Allah give them to be a one when they're on, they're off, off, off. And they have to continuously practice being off but when Allah want them on then Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem they're on, the energy is coming, the fires is reaching, madad is supporting them and they're giving isharats from a realm that's not from here and the knowledges are not from here and it's from a world of light that's eternal and has nothing to do with your head and goes straight into your soul. And their knowledge is burn into your soul so that you'll repeat it. And if you have love and good character you'll keep repeating 
unconditionally, untrained, you'll be thinking about what was said. Not because you have said and you memorize through your head, but the knowledge from soul to soul is like a laser that begin to burn into the soul its uloom. And that the soul understood it, those who contemplate and ponder will begin to learn how to bring it out what was burned upon their soul. وَعَلَمَ الْقُرْآنَ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ Allah taught, we taught you, we taught, we taught you the Qur'an, then we created your insan and your form. So when they learn to be nothing, because we say everyone wants to reach to Allah then they come and teach, if you want to reach to the one, you have to be a nukht. If you want to be a dot, this now comes why you need a guide because there's a lot of imaginary dots in the world. So when somebody asks, why you need a shaykh, why you need a guide? Because we're giving you now the understanding from the world of light and energy. So you don't have to give complicated hadith, you don't have to try to convince somebody with ayatul Qur'an and then they recite something back to you differently. The law of light and energy is far more supreme and sheds light upon your understanding of Holy Qur'an because Qur'an is from the world of light, brought into the world of form and misunderstood from insan. That's why there's millions of tafsir books because each one is thinking they understood something. But from the world of light the sharat and its realities begin to dress. So if everyone wants to reach to Allah's one, you have to be a dot, that's binary code. If Allah's one and you're one, you can never reach. I don't care what your religion is, what you think your religion is right, what your practices are right, you think your madhab is right, the other one thinks his madhab is right. If you're a one, you never reach Allah's oneness. Because the magnetism of one is going to repel and repulse and you repulse Allah right? So they're one, 99.9%, 99.9999% are one. They merely accepted Islam but they don't have iman. You can't go around thinking, you have iman because you said you have iman. Iman is an event in which you love Prophet more than you love yourself and a nur and a light enter into your heart. You witness it, you feel it, you taste it and experience it. And you feel and know that the light of Islam has entered into your heart, the light of iman has entered into the heart. So it means then the reason for guidance in tonight's understanding is that we are trying to be a nukht and Allah is the one. How on this earth anyone who doesn't have a guide going to reach Allah's oneness and to reach the one? If you're not being trained and continuously disciplined and taught the mannerisms and understanding and energy, isharat and practices that completely bring you to be effaced because the overwhelming tide of this world is pushing you to be a one. Face book, well your face supposed to be hidden but shaitan wants you to be identified, right? Wasn't that the duality of light? For those whom are studying science and understand science, why is light a particle? and light a wave. And why is it they can only see the particle of light and they can't see the wave of light? The double blind experiment, light acts differently when you're watching. When you're watching the angels in the light, they're watching you and they act as a particle. It's all in science of schools. When they turned away and didn't look but they had like a reflective way of understanding they saw that the light went through two holes and acted as a wave. This is the reality of our insan. 
if you're observed and you are too much into yourself and you're being observed by other people, how is it, imp how is it even possible to be a nukht? Because shaykhs don't come out talking and putting their face all over profiles. From beginning they were completely unknown, they were unseen and they were huge supporters. They supported with the, all their wealth and all their time and they were unknown to anyone. And when they reached the completion of their nukht they were told to come out and when they came out they were horribly abused. The position of becoming a one is not something easy. The shaykh backbited, terrorized, tortured, put out every type of horrible article, had nothing to do with the person, every type of test to see if I can crush this person. And if I do everything to obliterate the person but Allah keeps them up, that's a shaykh. Every type of backbite, every type of rumor, every type of gossip was put out, put out, put out. So what? You're trained in humility, what do you care? You don't care but you say, well how's anyone going to come with all this bombardment? And they showed, if Allah wants you up there's nobody who can bring you down. And Allah brought up, Allah sends a magnetism into the hearts and the people are attracted regardless of anything. Then you know the support of Allah is with that one. So that's the shaykhs. They're trained all their life to be nothing and when they're ready to come out they're going to be crushed. And when they're crushed the shaykhs are watching if Allah's supporting that one. If Allah's supporting people will be attracted regardless of how much they attack. The shaykh doesn't put you and say, oh great mashaAllah you're great I'm going to now make all these things you're fantastic, he's the best one, he's the best one, best one. Allah's, they're going to jump you. They're going to put every type of attack. See if you're the humble one we're going to crush you and as a result of crushing you we see if Allah wants you up. That's their life and as a result they're out there to teach. So in their shadow of the one of Allah, this is the reality of Atiullah, the one, Atiya Rasul, the reflection of Allah the perfected reflection, well, I'm not in heaven, I'm not on earth but I'm in the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah وسلم, wa ulul amri minkum and now the reflections of the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, they're like a shadow of that love on this earth as a one. And as a result of moving onto the earth they are there to teach people their binary reality. So anyone without a shaykh and why you need a shaykh is that from this world of light and energy would describe to me Allah's one and if you're one there's no way you're going to be with Allah. You're, re you're repulsing, you're reflecting, your magnetism is impossible. The science and the reality of that science is already proving it. The magnet with a positive charge is a one and if you're going to come to Allah thinking you're positive and great why He couldn't flip Pharaoh? Why Sayyidina Musa couldn't convert Pharaoh? Because he was a huge one, ana rabbil ala. He said, what are you coming to me from the desert teaching me about religion? I am the Lord Most High. Your Lord has life and death, I have life and death too. He said, bring two people, kill that one, let that one go. See, I can do. <laughs> he was crazy. Yeah, so if you're one, impossible to move towards that reality. So anyone who comes and says, they don't want a shaykh, they don't need a shaykh, said, then you're never going to be a nukht and you'll be lost in this one and when you're, you're into yourself too much and as a result of being a one what's happening now? Oh you'll, you'll make an Instagram account, you'll make a Facebook account, you'll make every Snapchat account, you'll make a TikTok account and you'll be such a contaminated one that nothing will open and you will have pushed yourself away from the Divinely Presence and the reality of a shaykh is to come and to teach about the One. Not that he's a god, he's nothing, he's a nukht. But when the light comes, the energy comes, the teachings are coming from the One 
and the teachings are coming to negate the energies that are coming through their hearts and through their associations are going to be very testing. As soon as they talk about testing, everybody's screaming and yelling, firing emails, rah, 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 rah. why? Because the energy just came, energy came from central command and it's like a fire onto the nafs and people yelling, screaming, I'm never coming back again, don't come, don't, don't need anybody. This is your Lord that you have to be scared of. If that energy comes and their teachings are real, it's a full energy reaching you through the internet, through person, wherever the person is. The energy comes to melt the one, make them to be a nuqt. The teachings come to melt the one, to be a nuqt. And every time a test comes in life, it comes like a fierce energy. And the people whom are too much a one, they want to begin to fight and yell and scream because the station of dying before you die is not easy. Tariqah is a mercy from Allah because people are saying at home, well maybe I don't need it. Don't but in the grave is 70,000 times more difficult than what we're explaining to you. The grave is the great annihilator because every arrogant one no matter how much they run Allah grabs them and throws them into the dirt and that dirt rips apart everything, sends its worms, sends everything and then its azab and all of its punishments. Punishment for what? To rip apart that one and annihilate them into their dust and their nukht reality. Every one has to be brought down. There is no one other than Allah And in the last days the understanding of Qiyamah is that Allah will bring everything down. All the buildings that think and make them to feel that they are independent of Allah that their wealth makes them to feel independent of Allah Their health, we just went through one test with health. Everybody thought their health was so wonderful, ah, I take vitamins, I jog all the time. They were the first ones in the grave. If Allah want to bring, brings everything down because now we're in the phase as we're going towards that reality, everything goes down. So there's no escaping. Well, I don't want to take this path, I don't I just want to stay one. It's 70,000 times more difficult in the grave. So the rahmah of tariqahs is that Allah said, I'm allowing you into these tariqahs so that they train you, teach you on how to slowly be brought down. And even in that slowness you can see how much one is in someone. I like this rhyming, how much one is in someone? Because huh? everyone on that side say, I don't have any one, oh one little thing, one little kid screaming, one little thing, oh all the ones came out, big ones, big ones, right? So I thought you were humble. No, the one who thinks he's humble is very scary because thinks he's humble but the one whom has been smashed and is humble and doesn't reply, doesn't talk, doesn't say anything, that's humble. Not the one who thinks they're humble. So means then even the tariqahs understand the tajallis come and before holy nights everybody's fighting at home. Everybody fight before they get in their car, everybody fighting in the car because the tajallis are coming, the nafsis are angry, the nafs is like a wild lion knowing he's going to be beaten in the associations. Every type of anger is coming and disruption coming. Why? But you thought in this game that shaitan was allowing you to make a touchdown, a goal or no, 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 something's going to happen, so block them, block them at every level. People even get tickets so they won't come. So they get angry and turn around and go home. And that could be on the internet too, I was about to watch you, I got in a fire through the thing, I didn't want to watch anymore. 
oh great, bravo for you. you. You again got defeated by shaitan. Rijal, that's where we started off with Imam Ali Salam. They fight shaitan. They know a test is coming. They know that he's aggravating and they fight fiercely against him so that shaitan is scared of them. And when he becomes scared of them, he starts to aggravate everyone around them because now he doesn't go to that one because that one knows what shaitan is doing. So our life is not to surrender to the devil but to fight the devil. To understand, no my path is to be nothing. My path is not to be angered. My path is to efface myself and to be humble in the face of humility. He said, hum humility is not you bring a tea and pretend, I'm humble, I bring you water, here you want water, I'm humble one, I'm humble one. But you pinch him the wrong way and he'll be extremely angry, fiercely angry. No, this is not uh, self-regulated. The path of humility is when Allah decides He's going to crush that servant, He's going to test that servant, He's going to put everything in, in a sense of agitation to that servant. And then Allah is the one whom judges His servant if they passed. We take a life in which to imitate and understand, make our salawats and do our meditation, do our practices and then control. And when we control our tongue and control our reactions, if you have to scream and shout and yell, eat it, absorb it, go into your prayer carpet and cry to Allah Renew your wudu and meditate, go into sujood because that is the great effacing. Why Allah has us praying? Because He wants you to understand that when you stand for Allah you're imitating as if you're something. The pinnacle of your salah is not standing, that's the height of your arrogance when you stand. When you stand for Allah the continuous example is giving to us, come to my presence, O arrogant person. And as soon as you begin to come Allah make you go to ruku, means bow to me. And as you bow Allah saying, raise your head, now Go into prostration, you're nothing. So the height of salah and the power of salah is in sujood, not standing. People think, oh they stand all this time and they want to recite very, very long. Get back into sujood where you're nothing in Allah's presence. Put your animal down and which your heart is highest and the head that causing all the problems is on the lowest point. And only in sujood you can find your du'a to be accepted and closest to your Lord and to your reality. And every faiz and emanation in sujood begin to enter into their foreheads and into their hearts. And then as soon as you go into prostration all your negativity is being pushed into the ground and you ground yourself. So it means everything we have is related to this binary code to positive and negative energy. We're standing at the pinnacle of our height and our health and Allah is showing us, be nothing to me until you're finally down into your prostration and that's when Allah pulls all the negative character, negative energy is coming out and every goodness and light is being entered into the servant. So it's the great grounding of our reality. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding that the presence of the shaykhs and why we need guidance is so that we can begin to practice with the one. And when we practice with that one we're practicing to be nothing, a dot, a nukht. And in that nothingness and the energy that coming to us is our only chance to annihilate and efface. And as a result of that effacing we are moving closer to the Divinely Presence. Those whom struggle and fight with that issue is because there's too much oneness in them and that's what's making them to be erratic, ecstatic and angered and all sorts of characteristics coming out. So always in our life is to remind ourselves with post-it notes that I'm no one and I don't want to be anything, Ya Rabbi. Grant me to be humble, grant me to be effaced and to be of nothingness so that your lights and dressings to dress me. And every time I feel that spark coming, 
that that spark is coming to make me feel like a one again. And if I can subdue that then I can reach towards the reality of that nukh to be dressed by that nukh. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaam ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs>